guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So the story that we're going to be covering today is actually a story I recorded back this summer, I think it was July. And what ended up happening with my great luck was that the audio did not record, so I just scrapped the story entirely, which is not typical for me to do. However, I've continued to think about it since then, so I decided I'm going to cover it because it truly stands out to me, let's just put it that way. Before we get into this video, as you know, content like this is often demonetized, so I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve is America's favorite adult store. Not only does it come with discreet packaging, but they also donate 20% of their profit to help fight the spread of HIV around the world. They also have a 20 seven customer service and have 90 day no hassle returns. If you go to adamandeve.com and use code GLARE, you'll get 50% off one item and free shipping in the US and Canada. Thank you Adam and Eve for sponsoring this video. Horror story uncovered at body donation center including head sewn on corpse in Frankenstein Manor suit claims. 33 plaintiffs have filed a civil suit against the Phoenix based biological resource center accusing the company of treating corpses without dignity or respect. Do you see what I meant when it stands out to me? I apologize if this is really nitpicky, but the English major in me will not let this go. Frankenstein is the name of the doctor, okay? The creature is often referred to as the creature, the damned being. It's not Frankenstein. Frankenstein's the doctor. Although I understand that here they said Frankenstein Manor, indicating that Frankenstein's manor, aka the doctor's manor, is how it's sewn together. I'm just pointing it out generally speaking, for people's awareness. Okay, moving on. When federal agents raided an Arizona body donation center in 2014, they made a series of bizarre and disturbing finds. A cooler filled with severed genitalia, a severed head sewn onto another body, and other medical atrocities. FBI Special Agent Mark Quinner described various unsettling scenes during the raid of the for-profit Biological Resource Center in Phoenix, Arizona, a facility that sold body parts and offered services to dispose of corpses. The discoveries are now being revealed as part of a civil suit filed against the business and its owner, the appropriately named Stephen Gore. The absolute irony of this guy being named Stephen Gore, Quinner said that he observed bodies piled on top of each other with no proper identification or indication of who they belonged to. Amongst the heaps, Quinner said that he found buckets containing severed limbs and heads, a cooler filled with male genitalia, and a large torso so with the head removed and replaced with a smaller head sewn together in a Frankenstein manner, according to AZ Central. The imagery I'm seeing in my head is deeply disturbing, so I'm not gonna go ahead and share that with you, but I have to wonder who thought this was the right way to operate or who thought they would get away with this. Like, why did Stephen Gore think that this was going to work out? I the body that has a smaller head sewn together with it? What were you planning on doing with that? I'm just wondering because as much as I can find rational reasons, I don't know, medical centers to ask for bodies for medical students maybe, there's the other side that's like, what would be the medical reason or a scientific reason to have a body with the wrong head sewn onto it, a smaller one? What would you do with that? Me being myself, I immediately jumped to necrophiles want these bodies to do God knows what with them, which might be a little bit of a jump, but at the same time, this place doesn't really hit me as dignity central or morality central, so would it surprise me? No. 33 plaintiffs have accused the Biological Resource Center of not treating the corpses in their care with dignity or respect. The suit also alleges that the facility obtained the bodies through false statements and that body parts were sold through various middlemen. Many families believe their loved one's organs would be donated for research, unaware that organ donation and body donation are not the same thing and that the corpses would be dismembered and sold piecemeal for profit. Sorry, I felt like I was gonna gag. This is a horror story. It's just unbelievable. This story's unbelievable, plaintiff Troy Harp told the AZ family. Harp had believed his mother's and grandmother's bodies, which he had surrendered to the Biological Research Center in 2012 and 2013, would be used for scientific purposes. Cancer and leukemia and whatever else using sample cells, said Harp. That's what I was told. The Biological Research Center had been selling whole bodies with no shoulders or head, for $2,900 according to a price list in court documents cited by AZ Central. A torso with a head would cost 
$400, a spine costs $940, and a whole leg costs $1,100. Feet, knees, and pelvises all sold for less than $1,000. I have a lot of thoughts. First of all, if it was one of my loved ones that I found out I was misled and one of my loved ones was chopped up and sold to a bunch of different people, the pure level of rage I would have would fuel me to destroy Stephen Gore. I'm just putting that out there. There is nothing that bothers me more than people who take advantage of people who are mourning or grieving or in a hard time of their life and push them to make decisions without giving them the full information as we can see here. Also, there's something very troubling to me about pricing things that are in your body or are parts of your body. Like the pricing of a spine at $940 is not only a very specific number, but also a very strange thing to think about. I think the only time I've ever thought about this is what I was looking at how much you could sell body parts on the black market for. It's a long story, but that's the only time I've thought about it and every time I'm deranged. Deranged? Is that the word I'm looking for? Because that sounds like I'm deranged, like I'm the one who just forget it. it. It bothers me, okay? It makes me feel uncomfortable. Arizona has few regulations governing the body part industry. Four major body donation businesses operate throughout the state along at least one company that specializes in freezing corpses in the hopes of eventually reanimating them. Freezing corpses in the hopes of reanimating them? This isn't Austin Powers. I'm confused. People still believe this can happen? The Biological Resource Center has been operating without accreditation by the American Association of Tissue Banks. In the wake of the discoveries of this case, Arizona passed a law in 2017 that prevented body donation centers from operating without a license. However, the law has not yet been enacted and therefore cannot be enforced. When I read this part of the article, I swear I felt like I was having a stroke because the concept, the sole abstract concept of some random unlicensed person being able to legally open a body donation center scares the shit out of me. It just doesn't compute to me that someone who opens a body donation center is necessarily a well-meaning individual in the sense of, I'm not saying everyone who has a body donation center is terrible, I'm just saying I feel like the wrong people would be the ones taking advantage of the fact that there's no need for licensing. Maybe people who have criminal records, maybe people who have been caught doing things things with bodies that are no longer alive. I don't like this no licensing thing. I don't understand how that's even possible. Like you're dealing with dead people's bodies. How can that be something that's unlicensed? Of all the things that could be unlicensed. Gore pled guilty in 2015 to operating an illegal enterprise after being accused of selling contaminated human tissue and of using bodies in ways that had not been consented to according to KNXV of Phoenix, Arizona. He was sentenced to probation. Gore had written in a letter to Maricopa County Senior Court Judge Warren Granville before his December sentencing that he was overwhelmed by operating a business that had no formal regulations. I could have been more open about the process of donation on the brochure we put in public view, Gore wrote, according to AZ Central. When deciding which donors could be eligible to donate, I should have hired a medical director rather than relying on medical knowledge from books or the internet. Gore has no expertise in the medical field and is not believed to have been educated beyond high school. Gore will appear in court again in October. How delusional do you have to be to start a business that is inextricably tied with medicine and science having no understanding of it, no professional understanding of it anyway, because anyone can read Wikipedia that doesn't make you a doctor or that doesn't make you prepared to deal with human bodies. Plus, I feel like this is such an inherently emotional thing because when someone dies, for the most part, people are mourning them. So. If you fuck with that, that's pretty serious and people are gonna be pretty pissed at you, don't you think? So the fact that he didn't hire any kind of person to direct him in terms of like how to be even safe from, you know, hazards, from diseases, just like the ideas of everything that could go wrong would make me want to hire multiple people that are super informed or have run a business like this before because just going in, I have no words. Probation, it feels like a little too nice. So then I found another article that has a little bit more in information and a Denver-based attorney representing the plaintiffs described it as it's really body snatching without them having to dig up the graves. Which I agree because if the person who is donating the body did not consent 
to the body being dismembered, you're going against their will and it's up to them. So then it also says that the BRC, the Biological Resource Center, so the center we're discussing, BRC's warehousing process exposed much of its inventory to cross-contamination. A deposition from one of the FBI officers who raided BRC's Arizona office revealed that body parts were often organized by limb after they were dismembered with infected parts mixed with clean ones. Customers were never given access to any of the death certificates, medical records from donors, or medical social history questionnaires administered by BRC among caregivers or next of kin. If a customer found out the body they purchased was infected, BRC would offer to sell the body at a discounted rate in order to ensure the sale. Then it says, this is not the first time BRC owners Stephen and Sally Gore have been in a courtroom over their business practices. AZ Central reported that Stephen Gore had pled guilty to federal charges for the illegal use and sale of human body parts in 2014. He was sentenced to four years in prison but served no time because of good behavior. So this also has me fucked up because I'm like, he did the same thing again essentially and he's just getting probation. This is a repeat offender. What makes you think probation's gonna do anything? So I'll link both articles down below because this one is quite long and goes into more detail than I'd prefer sharing here. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you think this is as morally bankrupt as I do? Because I find this absolutely disgusting. Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons as always, and let's get right into the fan art.